Welcome back to King's Quest 2 VGA. This is Vialir, and it is now dark outside. Um, if you remember, the church over here is open after dusk. And that's now. And the bell's ringing. The church bell is tolling. Can we go in now? Can I finally Finding the pray? Door unlocked and unbarred, you enter the church. Mm, this is not something I do in real life, but... Hey, a book. We like books. You look over the Bible, which of appears course. to be many decades old. You open it and find that an otherwise blank page at the front has been written on. It is dated over 20 years ago. To all those who have heard the word, we are the chosen few, blessed by the spirits of the wild. Destined for greatness, concealed by a cloth, there is but one challenge we must overcome before our future can be set in stone. Simple people of Kalima cling still to the memory of their former ruler. Even now, years after his fate stark turn, they retain their hope that he will not forsake them. As long as this is so, our goal cannot be attained. So, my brothers, it is our duty to return the Bible to where you found it. You also notice that a page from the Bible has fallen onto the floor. I wasn't done reading. You pick up the fallen page and read it. The words appear to have been written recently. Spiders earnest with spindly eight spin webs with negligible weight. Can we get back to that? Over the Bible. Okay. So my brothers, it is our duty to see the land cleansed of its bite. Do not fear our enemy, our faith, purpose, and power will guide us to the future we were promised. A path has been found to him, O oh brothers. Let us let him hear the warning howls. The cloth will be lifted for all time, and our songs will echo the end of him, his influence, and his family. Our time is at hand. Low Wolf. Hmm. That's an odd name. You return the Bible to where you found it. Well, got guy praying over here. Eh, let's pray. Feeling humble, you kneel down to pray. You rise again after a few moments. The monk stirs, stands, and turns to face you. Oh, cool. Let's talk to him. One is meant to speak from a pulpit, not to it. Father, I go now to a place of darkness. While I am stout of heart, the path laid down before me is unclear. I seek only the knowledge that my passage be illuminated by heavenly favor, and a prayer that I may make it through. The monk gives you a reassuring smile and pats you on the shoulder. He then lifts a silver cross from around his neck and places it in your hands. Thank you. You are welcome, my child. You can talk? Of course. I thought monks were forbidden from speaking. Not all churches follow the same rules, and this church is quite unique. Really? How so? The monk just smiles placidly at you. Yeah, so, okay, we got a cross. Um, in case anyone heard that, I was opening the package I mentioned in the last video. I got the Space Quest Companion, which I thought covered 1 through 6, but apparently only covers 1 through 4 and the preview of 5. I don't know if there's a more updated version, but the other package I got was the first King's Quest novel, The Floating Castle, which stars not Graham. Um, we'll be getting more into that later. But, let's go over this way. Eh. Warning, a pair of wolves dart out oh. of the dark forest and dash towards you. Oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck. No, let me move! I gotta protect my- oh. What? What? For a minute there, you thought those wolves were going to attack. Curious as to why they didn't, you decide to follow them. Okay. Oh, watch you out, Mister! Standing alone outside the church, then you notice the two wolves approaching him. What? You were about to yell a warning to the monk, but the words die in your throat as the man steps forward and pats the wolves' heads. What? No, my brothers, we must not hurt him. Now, brothers, he will go to the heathen's abode. He will do what needs to be done. What if he does not? Then, my brothers, we will complete the task before us. The one we began many years ago. 
What? That's a deep voice. Um. Wow, oh, he looks kind of funny. He's looking at a full moon. Is he like a werewolf or something? Move away from the church. Your heart racing faster with every step. You have a good idea now what will happen once the moon comes out in full, and you do not want to be anywhere near here when it does. Yeah. One thing's for sure, you're not getting married in that church. I believe in the original game you did, but the original game didn't have that plot. Alright, so you may have remembered I was looking for a trigger a lot earlier, and apparently it can't be triggered until now, and actually the funny thing is I start recording this video and I was trying to find the trigger on my own, but I was unable to. So I ended up pausing the video, looking it up, and realizing how stupid I was. So as you may notice, we are at Grandma's house. And we let ourselves in. No knocking! Oh, sir, have you seen my little granddaughter? She ventured to the town to buy food for me, but has not yet returned. I fear she may be in peril. The forest is not safe at night. Okay. No, don't even say a word to her. Okay, so, as you've probably meant, guessed from my mention so far, the, um, that's Grandma for Little Red Riding Hood, who is Possum. And she has not returned home, and it is dark. And children should not be out at dark. Hear the sound of a child sobbing nearby. Sobbing? A child? Could it be? As you approach, you recognize the child. It is Possum, the little girl you helped earlier today. No, oh, what's wrong, Possum? It should be a grandma. Beating around if you speak in a forest. I don't. You may have noticed that all the icons have little points on them that um, mark their, like, hot spot. I do not see one on the talk icon, which is why I keep talking randomly. I would think it's a speech bubble, but sometimes it doesn't seem so. sure that you heard correctly. Uh, a dwarf, did you say? Listen, I'm going to try to find this dwarf that you say stole your food. You get back to your grandma, understand? Possum nods, says a soft thank you, and heads back home. Okay, so now we are on the quest for food. Save. And it looks like we get to go deal with our friend, the dwarf. The dwarf. Why did I call that save? I meant to call that... You know, since we're going for food. I don't really like to think of two things at once. Oh look, we're at the dwarf house. And I believe what we're supposed to do here... I'm going to resave it since we're closer. You may have remembered me knocking on the door several times. You rap on the treehouse door and wait a moment, but get no response. And it looks like this is going to be a random thing again. You rap on the treehouse door. Uh, let's go hide. There we go. You watch as a little man runs out of the door which has been built into a tree. You surmise that you have found the culprit's home. The vague aroma of chicken soup confirms it. That fiend. Oh, he left his door open. He'll just close it. 
because we're nice people. Finding the door ajar, you cautiously open it and step inside the tree. Yeah, we do the opposite of that. <laughs> There's a ladder down here. And maybe that's why you didn't answer the door. You're probably all the way back here. Okay, so a very sharp knife has been stabbed into the table. Its blade reflects the light from the burning fire. Can we take that's it? That's not a knife. The knife you found under a rock one time? Now that was a knife. You might recall that from King's Quest 1. So let's take our pot of You grab soup. the handle of the bubbling pot of chicken soup. You take it with you. All right. You can't ever resist opening a chest. Upon opening the trunk, you find a number of items that the dwarf has obviously stolen and stashed away. Among them are some gold coins. They display the distinctive face of the first king. They could only have come from the magic chest of Daventry. That must be the dwarf that stole the chest in the first place. Let's close it. Close the chest. And in the original game, you could get your lost items back by coming here. But, and actually the dwarf can come back. I don't know if it, that actually happens in this version, but in the original... Um, hear the latch fall into place again as the door closes behind you. In the original version, you could get your stuff back from that chest and the dwarf could come back and you could climb into the chest. Don't know if that's true of this version. I don't feel like waiting to find out. Because that would be boring. And I try to avoid everything in the name of boring. Okay. So we go back to Grandma's house. And go in. Welcome. Come in, please. Possum told me to expect you. Oh, she's sleeping. The little girl is fast asleep. Alright, well, let's get the chicken soup. Grandma likes soup. The pot contains chicken soup. However, it has gone cold. No one likes cold soup. Into the fire with you! You place the now cold chicken soup over the crackling fire once more. After it heats up to eating temperature, we move it again. Hot soup. You offer the soup to Possum's grandma. Introduce yourself and wait courteously while the frail elderly lady eats the nourishing meal. When she is finished, she sets the empty bowl down elsewhere and turns her attention towards you. Alright, so she likes us now. If you would like to speak with me for a while, I would welcome your company. A person should never turn away a visitor. Especially when she reaches the twilight of her life. You can't help but feel a sense of finality in the old woman's words. Oh dear. You must have something in return for your kindness. You do not need to risk your safety for an old worn out woman like myself. Look under the bed. You should find something to keep you a little warmer on a cold night like this. Hmm. Under the bed. You peer under the bed and find a thick black cloak. Lying atop it is a beautiful ruby encrusted ring. You pick both up with reverence. I could not possibly take these fine things from you. Oh, please. I want you to have them. Nights in Kolima are cold, believe me. As for the ring, well, perhaps it is better that I do not have it to remind me. As you wish. Remind you of what? They say a home is one's castle, but... You have a charming young granddaughter. Grandma smiles at you graciously. She is a treasure to me. I would do anything to ensure that no harm comes to her. If I may inquire, what became of her parents? Grandma frowns and her eyes darken for a moment before she forces a melancholy smile to her face. They were lost to us many years ago. I am afraid your possum never really knew her parents. It must have been a daunting task raising a child by yourself, especially at your age. Uh, I mean... At my age? I am certain 
person that was young as I used to be, and there is no shame in that. I have tried to raise her as best I could to keep her safe and well. However, I fear that as of late the reverse has become truer. Hmm. If you please, I was hoping you might tell me of the cloak and rings origin. Oh good, origin story. Oh, closes her eyes as if the memory she seeks is painful to her senses. They were my husband. He was a proud man. The last of his line. His family had been rich. A great deal of old money, you might say. They lived in that castle you might have seen to the north. Its location upon that island is evidence of how much they valued their privacy. He was a good man, my husband. He took care of me. Certainly he had a strange habit. Most men do, if you will pardon me for saying so. I suspect that he practiced magic so I could never catch him in the act. He would frequently journey afar, taking that black cloak with him wherever he went, to places he would not talk about. He said that it represented something important to a certain group of people, and that I was never to mention it to anyone. Hmm. He was always there for me, always, until that fateful night. We had been married just over a year. Grandma was a hottie. Child. We were both out walking in the Weirwood forest late one night. The air was warm, and in our youth, we paid little attention to the world and its many dangers. Besides, there was a full moon. We could see clearly enough. A shadow passed over us. We looked up, thinking it might have been a stray cloud. It was not. Descending upon us like a demon was the largest, most hideous bat I had ever seen. Its fangs were bared and it dove straight for me. I must have screamed. My husband flung himself in front of me to protect me. He swung his arms about frantically in hopes of warding the horrid thing away. Perhaps he was trying to cast a spell, but could not recall how he Spanish. It paid him no heed and would not be deterred. It swooped again and again relentlessly. At one point, my husband's hand must have clipped the bat's wing because it lost control and crashed into his shoulder. He tried to wrest the foul creature away, but the sand he shrieked suddenly. The horrid thing had bitten him. Oh, well, at least it didn't get him in the neck. He never did recover from that incident. He just faded with each passing hour. Within two days of the attack, my husband had died. Mm -hmm. They buried him on his family's plantation on the island. Island? Kalima an island? Sometimes when I sleep, I can feel him watching over me, guarding me, protecting me. I think he is waiting for my time to come, so we can be together always. The old lady seems to be dozing off. You can barely hear her final words. I miss him so. Telling the story has clearly taken a great deal out of her. You watch the old woman a moment and notice her labored breathing as she sleeps. Despite the little girl's tireless daily efforts, perhaps there's nothing more to be done. That's depressing. Well, I guess we'll let them sleep for now. Oh, meanwhile. Sister Hagatha, my dear. Tell me you have good news. The king has arrived in Kalima, father. That is not what I meant. Yes. Well, he appears to be quite resourceful. It seems his reputation was not totally exaggerated. He's still alive. Ooh. For now, but that will change soon, I think. The king has discovered that one of the gems he seeks is in the possession of a colleague of ours. Ooh. Do you remember? Caldor. Caldor? Yes. Is he still trustworthy? 
totally skill sharp, and there's no question of his loyalty. My humblest apologies, Father, but would it not have been simpler for you to have dealt with Graham personally? Fear! Imagine the ensuing chaos where Daventry's king murdered his own land. How then would I be able to search for the item? I see. The father's in... Father, it's in Daventry? Okay, so we found out a lot of things just now. Um, apparently, Caldor is alive. I believe the statue said he was dead. Um, we received a black cloak. If you remember, Hagatha had a black cloak, and that's who was in that cutscene. And she said that Caldor was a um, colleague of theirs. I um, can't remember exactly if they mentioned it in this yet, but there is a very strong connection with black cloaks. And it's not mentioned until King's Quest VI, actually, but... There is an Order of the Black Cloaks, apparently. And this is one of the additions to the game. They, um, they actually took the Black Cloak. To, it's like one line in King's Quest VI. But the fans have taken it and run with it. So that, they're putting that into this story. And there's a couple more times it'll come up in later games, but I believe now is a good time to end this video, since we've found out a lot. So, I will catch you next time. Thank you.